G'day citizens, welcome to the front of this. I'm XQ, joined today by Agrid. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing fairly well. Alright, so we're going to simply watch out IRC and uh, give you our thoughts on IRC. So here we go. This one's on cargo, Agrid. So here we it go. It is, and we haven't seen it yet, so yeah. this is our, our impressions as we go. Alright, here we go. Cargo sits at the very heart of the non-combat Star Citizen experience. And as it continues to evolve in the upcoming Alpha 323 and beyond, its next major evolution is less about the places you'll go and more about the ones you'll start and come back to. Now, hangars, whether they're persistent, instanced, personal, or staging, make up the next frontier of cargo gameplay. And we went to Chad and his team for an early look at where they're going and how they're progressing. Let's find out more. So yeah, we've had a couple ISCs before to talk about the new cargo and hangars features coming. But now that we're here and about to release things, we want to talk a bit about how that impacts your play experience, even if you don't care at all about cargo. NPCs. Sorry, Agri? I said that was a lot of NPCs. Hmm. So let's start with persistent hangers. What are they and what does that mean? So a persistent hanger is an instance hanger that is going to be assigned to you whenever you select your home location when logging into the game for the first time for a patch. When that happens, what we do is we determine the largest ship that you have and then entitle to you a persistent hangar that's of the size needed to facilitate that. Wait, so that's the largest ship you own at that station? That means always been big ones. So, yeah. so what you're saying is that the hangar we choose is our personal hangar, instance instance hangar will just be big enough for the larger ship that yep. we could possibly spawn. But I mean, me like, and you personally, it's always going to be the thing. Yep. <laughs> Deep. Right. Ship. Whenever you go into that hangar into the game, that hangar at your home location is always your hangar, and you'll be able to use it like your home. You'll be able to keep things in the hangar. You'll be able to leave things around. You can invite friends in. You can treat it like your own little oasis. So let's talk about for these personal hangers, how do you actually get into them? You can make a request via ATC for landing. And when we do that, we'll check to see if you have any personal hangers entitled to you. You'll be able to enter in using largely the same methodology that you do now land and then you can just hang out in there. As far as what can you actually do with your personal like, hangar and what kinds of things can you decorate with it, what we're gonna do is allow you to call anything in your inventory up via that freight elevator. You can pick it up off the freight elevator either with your hands or using the tractor beam and just strew it about your location however you pick. Also in the hangars. I have a worry now about like, bugs persisting over and over and over um mm -hmm. like you remember when there was like trolleys like skittering around the place and making things explode and the all that yep. mm, i wonder you'll notice several new kiosks we have the freight elevator kiosk which has a brand new uh, ui and uh, inventory system to deal with uh, large volumes of cargo you're gonna have on the left hand side a section that is showing the contents of the platform itself. And on the right hand side, similar inventory layout with all your armor and weapons and items. And then you decide what you want to spawn in, um, in the freight elevator. The freight elevator then comes up and then you can start doing like loading and unloading of various cargo into your ship and so on. If you're considerate about how you're loading things and you're trying to optimize your loading times, It'll give you a lot of power as far as, for example, making sure that certain kinds of things are front loaded on the platform to make your multi-crew loading as streamlined as possible. And anything that's in your inventory. That, that's essentially made that a, a skill. Like being able to logistically place out cargo is, is going to be in high demand. Um, yep. That's a mini game unto itself, Algrid. Um, certainly if they tie that across to when you're buying cargo at a 
at a staging hang. You know, mm-hmm. I'm assuming a staging hangar or where you yeah. load stuff. But yeah, being but if a, you're a good load master, yeah, that's going to make. Yeah, stre- make stre- well, like you said, just streamline the process, knowing what order to load things in and out. That's mm. huge. Inventory, you're going to be able to call up. Some things you might have to put into an inventory container box. We're talking 8, 16, 24, even 32 SU size container boxes that you can put large items in. Now you can raise that up on the platform, including in collections transfer that very quickly onto your ship and then take them to another location. In your personal hangar, you'll also have access to several other kiosks, starting with the item bank. Which are another form of kiosk, which you could almost consider like a small freight elevator in a way, in that you can retrieve personal items such as clothing, armor, and weapons. Of course, the item that's being delivered will be delivered in a tray that's in the same machine, so you interact that kind of like you interact with a loot box and you uh, get that out, so no other player can actually fizz. So remember when I was talking about um, ages ago about what a very small manufacturing ship would be, like essentially an item spawn? That's that. So, yep. so, so the manufacturing, the very first level of manufacturing is very similar to what we just saw there on that thing. It would just be like almost like a closet on a ship that... 3D print something, but really it's just item spawning and a visual effect of some kind. Yeah, that's and if I do it, if I do go the next step of yeah. doing something that manufactures it, it's just yeah, some some light or flashing thing that says it's manufacturing that spits it out. So yeah, yeah. So what I'm, what I'm just trying to say in short is that's going to lead into base building that we'll see later yeah. this year. Yeah, basically get anything from your local inventory. And uh, these item banks can be found not just within the hangars, but also the wider location, such as your hubs and other key areas of a location. That's the death of the uh, massive, uh, you know, unlimited inventory. That's what they've just said. It's it's dead as a dodo, you know, but like, you have to actually go to a physical place to get it out now. Um, but does it transfer it in the background? So if I go to my item location at my hab, is that yep. also, if I then put the item in there, can I then run all the way across to, um, say it was at Arcorp, I, I dropped it at the hab, and now I've come all the way to the actual, um, where it showed them there near the ASOP, old ASOP terminals, can I pull it out there? and? So I'm not having to carry it with me the whole way. See, that there's little things like that I want to know. Yeah. Well, the other thing is that even if that's doable on planet, I don't, I, I don't think it's going to make it that, you know, you put it in your hangar on, say, Arcor, and then you can pull it out of that terminal at, or a similar terminal on Hurston. You're still going to need I, to yeah, the stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, I don't even think you could do it, say, at Area 18 and Area 17. I think it would be, yeah. just be the local area, and that's it. Yeah. All right. Yeah. To retrieve um, your personal items. Since you can't interact with the with your inventory anymore at any given time, it means like we need to have enough item banks around each location so you don't block each other um, from accessing an, an, a terminal, right? It's just a quicker way to get a quick gun or a few meta pins or your armor without having to load it up from the freight elevator. And the last kiosk that I want to talk about is the ASOP terminal which we have positioned in the hangar, so you can request your ships from within the hangar and not just the spaceport. So they will still remain in the spaceport, so if you don't have a personal hangar in your location, you can request your ship also from there. What we're doing is we're changing the way that the ships spawn in the game. You can now request your ships from within the hangar and they will appear to you. I saw this coming. You saw this coming, right, Agrid? Mm-hmm. Um, so it's no more like back in the day where they spawn and and float down, yeah. But they won't just come out of thin air. What happens is the whole of the floor will open up. You get this like amazing view of the, of the hangar, the lights dim, the doors open. And the landing platform will be rising up towards you and your ship will be there. It's we try to balance cup. it in a way that it doesn't. Say again, mate. It's just a spawn cup, just a very big one. Yeah. It's it's all this stuff is the stuff you and I have talked about all about all the years. Like you could see it all around the outside. Like I can't, I can't. It, I've lost count. The, I got rid of I've lost why? count of the number of times you and I have talked about the out, the stuff around the outside. Yeah. Well, it, it's why they were getting rid of pads mm. so they could actually bring this type of stuff in. We mm. don't want pads because we don't want ships suddenly appearing. Mm. So you'd summon it in your hangar, then you'd go to your hangar and it'd be there. 
Yeah. Now that you've got personal hangers, you need another way to stop that happening. So, yeah, well, you essentially yeah. won't be able to despawn on pads, so to speak. You'll have to. There are temporarily la a temporary landing zone, essentially, aren't they? You know. So yeah. All right. Take too much time for you, but also that it feels like it has the right weight to it, but also you don't have to wait for it too long. So now you have a seamless transition and a realistic way of storing your ships away. Additionally, you can do clever things like call up a smaller vehicle, such as a ground vehicle, drive it off, and then call up a larger vehicle. Then you'll have access to your ground vehicles without having to go to another location. You'll be able to call up multiple ships and maybe have one person fly up with one ship, call another one, have another person in your party fly up with another ship. Or you can just call up a ship, change your mind, and then call up a different ship without having to leave. So they're not, I know they're not showing it here, but they are describing it. So Agra, you tell me if this is what you think happens. You take off in the ship, and then yep. the elevator goes down empty, closes the doors, spawns new one, and it comes back up, doors open. Yep. That, yeah, okay, that's yep. what I'm saying. Exactly. And, and if you're storing the ship, it does exactly the same thing. Lowers yep. down with the ship, mm. closes, yep. he spawns, spawn a new ship or anything like that. It gives you a lot of flexibility. And I can already tell what some of you are thinking right now. We're not going to let the system like eat your body and store it into the inventory or anything like that. Uh, we'll make sure to account for that such that if there's a blocking change that happens, we'll stop the process, go back up to the default state and then tell the player about the issue so that they can account for it. If you do want to jump in to the platform just before it closes and fall to your death, you can fall to your death if you want to. <laughs> so this is really cool mm. and we're really happy to get this in. It's been discussed for some years now and it's been a very tricky thing to fit in and certain techs required to be able to do it. You'd be able to have this hangar in your own space and, and call your own ships and do a lot more within the hangar now. Do you get the feeling now, Algrid, um, you know how we've really got aero view at the moment. This is the, yep. um, seeing when they've done this with other things, they're gonna roll that aero view, essentially get that to 100%, then go back and add in different styles like Rebel and York, Safe Land, et cetera, et cetera. Are you seeing that now? That's what I'm starting yeah, I to sense. I would hazard a guess it's what they're doing, or they're going to have certain locations have, you know, that that hangar, or you know. So, hmm. but my guess would be, yeah, they'll 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 polish up the one style and yeah. then branch out. Yeah, and that and that makes sense because it's kind of in the middle ground, isn't it? You can kind of go down to Safe Land and up to Rebel and York, and yeah. if they want to go into what they call VFG Industrial, um, I don't think that's too bad either. I, I would kind of see that more like the organic one that's just using the rocks around the area. But I think uh, the other point that you kind of hit on were about it being in certain places, I think it might be that as well. And what I mean by that is, say you go to a particular um, place, it might just have Aeroview and Revel and York, but not Safe Land and VFG Industrial. And then you go to somewhere more criminally orientated and it's safe land and vfg industrial but then on bigger cities it could be everything yeah what do, what do you think of that the other thing the other thing to remember is that self land mm. aeroview revel in york and the industrial they are, they are actual different company manufacturers mm. of hangers and so by focusing on one mm. you're actually focusing on that company aesthetic and so mm. that makes sense so if we've got to go different sizes so originally mm. self land were the smallest hangers yeah now they're saying okay we've we've got to have self land that can take everything so you've got yeah. to actually go through that that design process and and then mm. the, the language for the whole the whole hangar style you can even okay. see the the system expanding over time because like moving into aliens and stuff like that as well like you could see a tavaran hangar on certain places and zion and banu vandal all that type of stuff so it would be really interesting to see the system expand over time and even possibility of other manufacturers so um yeah 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 i think i, I think it's it, it, again it feels like a um like like you know when they build out the stance system as, as the test bed that's what it's feeling like to me in and out and i never really kind of 
this might sound really bad, but I didn't really quite get that concept. Like, why weren't they doing them all at the same time? But I think that th this is showing why, because the cargo systems are just wait. Well, we we've talked about it, but um, mm -hmm. it's showing that it's a lot. You know, we've now got proof and evidence uh, that it is a lot more uh, complicated than we expected. I'll put it this way to you: because they are different um, companies doing the hangers, that's like different ship manufacturers. Yeah, we already know that CIG found it's better for us to do a family of ships rather mm. than doing yeah. a hodgepodge. So they're working on the family of Aeroview hangers mm. because we've got a small, the medium, a large, and the capital or whatever we need for that. Um, so I think it makes sense. Mm. And then I think down the track, as you said, they'll bring in the other the other brands we know mm. and maybe some we don't know. So, yeah. Yeah, agreed. All right, here we go. Now that we're adding all of this new facility to the hangars in the game, allowing them to be persistent, adding these freight elevators, adding the ship platform, there's a lot of more things that we have to have in these hangars for them to be useful for what we're adding. So the hangar sizes um, had to increase um, quite a bit. We did not want to do that originally in the beginning, but uh, soon when we did prototyping, we figured out that not all, not all the hangars, as I'd like the low-tech hangars in particular, quite old by this point you know so i mentioned low tech that's no like i've now heard high tech medium tech and low tech multiple times but anyway yeah. well, not all of them were well not in this video but connecting yeah. dots yeah to the same standards or metrics so we figured that with the landing pad now going down you had this gap for like quite some time before the um, before the doors close so there was a very narrow walkway for the player sometimes so we had to rejig some things and made it actually larger. So the um, large and XL have had significant size changes. So the XL is about 20% larger and the large is about 30% larger. So certain ships that were a little tight can now fit a lot more easily. So you don't feel like your wings almost... A giant sigh of relief went out for all Carrick and Spirit owners. I just heard... <sighs> Even 890 jump owners. Yeah, okay, too. Yeah scratch the walls of it so it feels a bit more natural and and better to the play experience to land in your hangar now the medium <laughs> is the same but taller oh wow um, poor spirit owners <laughs> but, yep. oh. the small has not been changed but we re have classified ships to fit into the medium that were once classified as small so hopefully a much better player experience than there has been before. And it's been interesting to take uh, the design of a elevator and the door uh, and extrapolate that across multiple sizes. So in some cases you can... So that's that's essentially a pad size change for a whole bunch of ships. That'll be interesting. I wonder yeah. if that has um, follow-on effects from some other things as well. I could see Vesoulian, uh getting the getting that pad size change mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. it's tall rather than... True, they did make the medium taller, you are correct. And also the Legionnaire uh, was in the yep. medium pad as well, and we know that that's like a very tall ship, yeah. You're right, good, good, good thinking. Kind of widen out the door and use the same shapes, and in some cases you need to think really about how those shapes work, and sometimes they don't work within a small door, for example, when it did work in a much wider door. So we've had to play around with that and keep them looking consistent with each other, but also uh, adapt those shapes to work for each size. So this is an actualization of a long-term goal for this entire cargo career, to make the whole thing feel more real. It means that the whole experience is gonna allow for manual loading. It'll also feel more rewarding because it'll give you more interesting choices to make throughout the process. It'll make multi-crewing a more interesting and useful experience. It's going to just make the whole experience a more skill intensive and interesting and uh, tactile. Here's a question. Another thing that we've talked. Yep, go for it. When I buy my cargo mm -hmm. I, at my terminal, does it go to my hangar in my and uh, that uh, you know cargo deck, and do I have to summon it up and then load it, or yes. can I just yes, static? yes. That is, that is the intent. So it's no longer just going to appear on your ship. You're going to have to load it now. Yeah. That's how it works now. So, so that's no automated process at all. It's just... Nope. Um, and, and 
you know, eventually you'll be able to pay for different services. This, this is what you and I were talking about, high and low tech and stuff like that. You know, at like bigger landing zones, you'll be able to have more people, you know, automated drones. PCs to load it or yeah. whatever. And then if you're and somewhere lower tech, like it's all going to be hand trolleys or tractor beams, you know. So um, it's going to be different. Like, again, I think um, initially it's going to be harder because they're probably going to have just hand tractor beams. But like as time rolls out, um, you will got to have NPCs help you load it as well, right? Um, and things like that. Yeah. But this is... But that really tier, does, as tier, we were saying before, tier, that really hang on. does. So this is tier zero, is what I'm saying. So this is the diff, yep. the worst it'll ever be. Yeah. Yep. And this, what, what it really does do, though, is it really does really highlight that Loadmaster is going to be key and central to mm. anyone who's wanting to do cargo to make sure they've got it running right. Mm. Yeah, it's a skill unto its own. So you, you're starting to see the cargos, like, let's be honest, the, the, the traveling with the cargo is the easy bit. The loading and unloading is where the skill's going to be. That, that, that's delivering yeah. that one box and it's yeah. right buried in the middle. See, <laughs> like everything up to yeah, get having it. it organized, knowing which order you're going to pull out in. So if you're going to three different stops, yeah, Algrid's totally right on that. If you're going to three different stops, it's got to be loaded in in the order you're going to pull it out. Otherwise, you're going to have to pull it all out, put it some back in, and uh, nightmare. Yeah, on absolutely. The, on the time sensitive missions, that would, could be the difference between life and death. All right. It's about is automated loading in the games. This allows you to still do commodity trading without needing to actually move the boxes yourself. It will be an option in the commodity terminal. Whenever you go and you pick the destination inventory, you'll be confronted with several options. One is the location inventory. The next will be all your ships that are at the location. If you choose a ship, you'll have the option to have it be automatically ah. unloaded or loaded for you. Of course, with an added cost, ah. the ship has to be stored to allow for the transfer and it will be time locked while that transfer is occurring. Ah. Different locations. So that's to kind of represent the NPCs loading them. I do think of it. I think this is tier zero. I do think eventually you'll have to see the NPCs doing it or whatever. This is just a stopgap. Oh. It, 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 well, you could get by without it because we've got that down. The ships are spawned down in that room closet, so they're loaded down in that closet, and then the ship comes up if it's being loaded. Yeah, but we know but, they've talked about the physicalization for yep. years, so eventually you'll, you'll pull uh, all your cargo up on the elevator, and you've got the spawn closets of NPCs. They'll come out, you'll see them load all the shit on, and then you'll go. But if I was hearing him correctly, you'll have a choice. So you can get it loaded automatically or you can have it spawn and then load it yourself. Yeah. So loading yourself may be useful if you've got a cargo that you're dropping, you know, you buy three or four loads of cargo and you drop, you're intending to do a, a round trip. Then you're going to load that cargo in the order you're going to take it off. Yeah. Or if you're just loading a single cargo to, to well, go we'll, on. We also you know, could, though, they've talked about in the past, Algrid, is you can actually have different levels and speeds of cargo loading. So, again, yep. this is definitely tier zero because if they bring that in, yep. you'd have different, like the option would be, who do you want to load it? You know, so so it, it increases the speed and stuff like that. That's how I know this is all tier zero because of the things yep. they've talked about in the past. But it's still cool to have that option initially right now. I, I, it is. Yeah. All right. In the game, we'll have different amounts of time. Places that are more optimized for trade are going to allow for faster transfer. You'll be able to still do the trading. You just have to wait a little bit and pay a bit more money. So your profits won't be quite as good in that case. Once the automatic loading process is finished, you can just go to the ASOP terminal in the hangar, access it, raise it, and go off, and you're on your way. If you care about cargo, this is going to be transformational. But even if you're not interested in cargo at all, it's still a foundational change for the game that fundamentally changes principles about inventory, physicality, and your play experience. The work's ongoing. We're nearly there. I think the team's done a great job on this. It's been tricky to get it working as it should be. It's a big milestone for the game that's been years in the making and coming. While I'm here to talk about it today, there's been a large number of teams across the entire company that have helped. Everybody from art, animation, VFX, through to all of the gameplay teams, engine teams. We've had 
a huge effort from Austin, Montreal, Los Angeles, Frankfurt, Manchester. It's been a big endeavor. So I want to thank everyone that's been. Apparently, LA didn't do anything. Do you hear that, Agrid? Just yeah, just want to point that out. Yeah. <laughs> he should have just said everyone except LA. Anyway, no, LA. Oh, he did he? Oh, okay, maybe I'd be I'd be hearing things right. Didn't see this vision through, and I'm really looking forward to getting this into your hands so that you can play with it. So what do we learn this week? Well, we learned that the days of big ships scraping by the edges of player hangers are almost behind us. That you'll soon be able to spawn your ships and have them rise up directly into these newly expanded hangers. And that the freight elevators and item banks within will herald a new future of physicalized cargo loading that should have long-reaching ramifications for life in the verse. And of course, while everything you see on ISC is always an early work in progress, because of the dramatic and far-reaching effects these systems will have on all life in the verse, you can expect this work will continue to iterate and evolve from what you've just seen between now and its upcoming targeted release in Alpha 323. For Inside Star Citizen, I'm Jared Huckabee. Thanks for letting us share the process of game development with you, and we'll see you all here next week. Hmm. Oh, wait, there's more intel. Hi. Um, we had a meme image for the end of the show. It's been our thing this season. Uh, this week's was a little too hot for TV. So we're going to put this week's image in your hands. Um, I'm going to give you a frame, and you put whatever you want on here. Uh, there you go. And here's my face, knowing this is a bad idea. That's a mistake. That's a mistake. That's a mistake. That's a mistake. Okay. That was a really interesting ISC. One of the better ones we've had all year, Agrid. I, hmm. I don't know if you feel the same, but. No, um... it really does highlight big changes. Like, how many games do you know that actually do that? Mm. Where the loading and unloading of cargo is really an it's, essential aspect. It's essentially never been done before because it's too complicated. Oh. It's a game unto itself. Yeah. You know? um, but that's why we're all following this project because it is that level of detail. It, you know, that, <laughs> how many times have we heard the word bloody impossible now or just not worth it? Yeah. Or, you know, um, I remember ED talking about how, oh, why, why would anyone want to walk around their spaceships? And like, you've only got to jump into Star Citizen right now and go, yeah, you can see why it's so much better. It is, it, and immersion is an overused word, yeah. but it is. And this is going to be immersive cargo. This is, this is going to appeal to people that, um, you know, like the truck simulator games and yep. the train games. Yeah, they're gonna love this shit because it's just like I'm really doing it, you know. Like, um, yeah, I, I, I see the appeal. Like, and even if it's something you don't I'm like yourself, my cargo and I'm loading it and I'm taking this load to this. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. And it's and it's got depth too. Like you, you saw that today. Like you, you like just the way things have got to go in and out, oh. and um, you, you, there's more than just one role to it. You know, that it, there's it's there multifaceted. Like he was talking about, you know, you have. You load a ship up. You give. You get some. You know. You you load. Get a ship out. Someone takes it off. You load another ship. Mm. Someone takes it off. You load a ship. You literally mm. spawn a ship. You load the cargo. Someone takes it off. Mm. Another ship spawned. You load that with cargo. Someone takes it off. So remember, Hayes used to talk about. Mm. I want to have my my fleet of cargo ships mm. and have people working for me. That basically full smack bang into what Hayes used to talk about, yeah. I reckon. Well, it also um, foreshadows the whole org, org hanger yeah. stuff that they talked way back when, you know, like like there would be an org cargo master, like you were saying, and there'd be ships coming and going into this huge ass hangar. And he's like, you're going off to here and you're going off to here. And this is your cargo. It's ready for you to go. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and if you have sub hangers, you might be like, your stuff is over in hangar five, whatever. Like you can see, that you're going to fall into these roles and we haven't even got into the depths of the external cargo loading yet because we know no. the raft and the whole series are a thing so that's a whole another ball game uh yet to come which is really cool so I, this, I, even I, ties, this even ties in uh outbursts and they're fixed you know the way we see the cargo stored outside you're dropping cargo you're gonna have to it, it ties in with everything 
It yeah, t- it, the entire game is built uh, like essentially around this because you need something for people to fight over if they're going to fight in combat. There it is, you know. Like it's just, it's it's this it's the core part of the game. It's what like it fundamentally touches every other part of the game. No matter what you're doing, you're moving something on a ship or you're doing something that somehow relates to cargo. Now, whether you like cargo or not, it may not be the profession for you, but you are going to need cargo at some point. Like everyone, you know who. You, ammo on my gun it's got to come from somewhere you know um everything base building everything it, it is yeah. probably the most influential um profession in the entire game and that's why it's they've gone yeah. so complicated with it because it needs to be that for everything else to be that complicated so yeah oh, and my understanding is our persistent hangers to start with mm. they will all, they're always going to be safe that that's your safe kind of home your your mm. but eventually i think there'll be areas where it won't be safe. What you mean they can where get broken into? Fight. Yeah, where people can break in and and steal uh, and, and but, fight over. Maybe, but they've but, never talked about that. I've got no. no um no evidence for that, but um I wouldn't say never, but I'd say highly unlikely from based on what I've heard, but yeah. I don't know, maybe. We'll see. Because again, it's persistent and it's instance now. So because they're instance it basically means they're unique to you, but you can invite other people in. So, yeah. um I don't know, maybe if they have non-instance places, then yes, I would agree with that statement. But the fact that the instance yeah. kind of um, speculates... Well, that's that what I'm saying. Initially, our, our home hangers, they're safe, but yep. other areas, maybe won't be. We can give places we fight over. And What would you like to hear um, from people in the comments below, our group? What are you looking forward to in cargo? Are you looking forward to loading and unloading and sorting cargo? Mm. Are you looking forward to being a loadmaster? Mm. Are you dreading... The being loading and unloading a cargo. Yeah. Because it's a scary yeah. prospect, isn't it, when you start to think of it something a like a whole prospect. whole EE and you're like, oh, God, this is going to take me a week. Uh, yeah. Yep. How long is that automated loading of a whole EE? <laughs> well, See you in three land, years. So. Bye. You know, like, uh, um, I'd like to know if there's anything that we just have that's kind of glaringly obvious or just something that we haven't seen in the comments because I, I, I this is quite a, I keep saying complex, but I think deep, or depth it's got a lot of depth to it, this system and there's probably something that we've kind of missed but obviously yeah. you know um i'd like to see little things down the road like you, you know one of the things at the moment is like most vehicles have to be on the the ground can you yeah. say put a, some really big cargo containers and put a cyclone on top of them i i, I want to see them talk about because we know the um i always forget the guy's name but the guy that the main guy that was talking he he actually invented the the stacking system as well so i want to know like can certain cargo containers contain more or hold more weight above them? Is there a height limit? Like we know, for example, the Bannon Merchantman has got this ridiculously tall area in it. Like, mm. is there a limit to how high, like on cargo ships, you can only stack them to a certain height and then they actually crush the ones at the bottom. So it's the same, like, is there a realism thing or have they just gone, no, it's the future, do whatever you want. Um, the other thing that um, I just thought of was, Related to the personal hangers, they they talked about they checked to see whether you were had a personal hanger available at this place. Yep. Now, I know there are people who have got more than one game pack. Mm. However, is, does that mean we'll, they will down the track give you ability to have a second personal hanger if it's on the same account, or will it just be will they do something else? I think other things. So, so, so if you listen to what they kind of said, they were hinting at that you can essentially purchase a hanger at a location, so have a permanent home that you live out and you permanently pay for. But they also mentioned that if you don't have one, so you can just have one that just spawns your ship and it's like a default hanger and you take off. Um, Yeah. So, so they'll temp you. You'll probably pay for like a temporary storage if you're just stopping there for an hour or however long you're staying there, or just dropping some stuff off. And then there'll be ones where you ha- they persist and you and you hold on to yeah. them. So, so I mean, they, talk, they talk about the personal hanger being one you you set your home mm-hmm. basic when you first log in. Yeah. Question is, if you've got multiple game packs, will you be able to have second mm-hmm. personal hangers at different locations? I think so, that's down the track. I don't think you've ever talked about it, but. So in typical Infranus fashion, we have tangented as we are asking for people to write stuff in the comments. But anyway, yep. yeah. So long story short, just let us know your thoughts. Um, did we miss anything? Um, yeah, I, I'd be interested to go because it's quite a detailed one. It's easily the best ISC yep. we've had all year so far. So yeah. All right. Um, don't forget to uh, like, subscribe, um, and ring that notification bell. Um, and thank you to everyone that went an extra mile at the end of the video on Patreon. Okay.
He's been aggroed. He's been executed. And we're out of here. Take care. See you, citizens.